One, two, three. Tag me in podcast. So personally, there's moments where I don't feel like I'm, I'm being truly authentic. Like I can realise it. And I'm always wondering why am I acting in that particular way? And I, I think because I've been on like certain courses and I've realised that I'm just, I'm trying to live up to other people's expectations. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to avoid either looking bad or trying to look good. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've just kind of like this whole realisation of it, it's, it's crazy to think. It's taken me 28 years to go, I'm acting inauthentic a lot of the time, especially in the work environment just based on the fact that I'm trying to live up to a certain model or mould. I don't know if I'm the only one that's experienced that, Ola. Would you say that? No, I definitely have experienced that. I think for me, it's been a combination of things. So mainly culture. So Mm -hmm. growing up in an African household, you are the man of the house. You must provide. You must do this. You must be a Christian. You must do this. You must eat that. You must behave and act a certain way. Growing up as a black British Nigerian in the UK mm-hmm. has added even more pressure to that. Mm-hmm. Black men are aggressive. So mm-hmm. I, me and a lot of my friends feel this pressure to be calm and kind of water ourselves down yeah. to a certain degree. So and, you appear safe. Yes, yeah, so nice. you appear safe. So if, um, classic example, this has happened to me many times. I'm walking down the road home. Um, it's 6, 7, 8 p.m. It's a lot darker now than it is. I see a Caucasian woman or a woman of any culture. I'm crossing the road. Mm-hmm. Why do I need to... Yeah. What I'm scared that she has this expectation of, wow, who, who's this black guy following me? It's I'm dark. just trying to get home yeah. like yeah. you, yeah. but I'm conscious of yeah. that expectation yeah. that has been set on me in the world I live in. How can I, how can I work around that? Mm-hmm. And yeah, just growing up, so many expectations and in the working environment as well, trying to come across a certain way, not, you know, not wanting to be that, again, that aggressive guy who wants to get things done. But at the same time, don't mug me off. Yeah. And I think it's just understanding that balance, understanding how to be your true self. Mm-hmm. And I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with because again, um, I know you sort of mentioned, you've both sort of traveled and been in different areas. And yeah. you mentioned that when you're in those different areas, that expectation, it's just not there. And that I, I, cause I do want to ask, cause I do plan on going traveling. What is that experience like? So you're in Malaysia, <laughs> you're in India. People aren't looking at you like, why aren't you wearing the latest Nike trainers? Why isn't your phone smart? Mm-hmm. what is that experience like well i think you're in a place of great curiosity when you travel away so you don't know things either right mm. and so you've got this wondrous look and experimentation and exploring and that just puts a different energy in the space yeah. you know and you you have designed a way to be free from your normal day-to-day activities so you you're just more energized anyway Mm. so there's more available in you to experience yourself differently so people experience a different you Mm. so that's like a a big connection then you know when you kind of remove that limit or that that expression or that expectation you kind of become a bit freer. You become yeah. a bit... You literally you expand. Live. Yeah. Because, you know, as you said, you're, if you're focusing on as a black man to be safe and acceptable and kind, you are limiting, you're consciously limiting your energy every day. Mm. So I don't get to see your brilliance, Ola, yeah. in mm. your guise of trying to make your, you seem safe to me or some other people who don't, who don't, who may not get you. But am I, I don't want to say am I wrong. Is it bad for me to be conscious of others is it bad for me to have other people in my no it's not bad for you to be conscious of others but you have to look at what am i doing in response to be in my awareness of others mm. am i constantly compensating and how much energy am i spending every day on my appearance so everybody just thinks i'm a normal human being which actually by the fact that you're working for an organization means that actually you're okay mm. you're not you're not taking that on as a basic fact you know yeah. By virtue of you being in that organisation, having the staff ID tag, yeah. right? Yeah. You belong there. Mm. I never even thought about it like that. And what if you yeah. walked around for a few minutes, as my mentor w- once said to me one time, is saying, you know, I am welcome wherever I go. Okay, yeah. Mm. So think of somebody who always is welcoming of you mm. and hold that in your heart before you go into the next, go into the office or in a meeting Mm. and say, I am welcome. I am truly valued. Yes. And see what that does to your body. See how that makes you relax. See what that does to your voice. Mm. See how that makes you smile and just rest in your self assurance. In, in this line of expectations, is it healthy to have expectations of yourself? 
Because yeah. again, we live in a world where there's so much external expectation. Mm-hmm. You must do this. I expect X, Y, Z, work, family, relationship, whatever the case is. But I'm thinking about myself. There are things that I want to achieve, the expectations of myself. Am I all right to say, actually, that's all right because it's from me? Or does it depend on what it is? You have to kind of separate the two. That's, I mean, that's what's driven by you or that's is what, it external? I think mean, that's, that's where it gets tough because a lot of people... I think have had well, external. I, I, I'm going to pause you for a minute okay. because yes. what can happen is you can get into this mental loop around who gave it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do I really want this? <laughs> a better question to say is who am I becoming and living out this expectation? Mm. Who am I becoming? Yeah. Am I becoming somebody I admire or am I becoming someone who's so okay. stressed out? Yeah. yeah. So frightened all the time that this expectation is actually just crushing me. Yeah. And I need to review it hard. Yeah. Because yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. Because yeah. like a classic example is um, from young, it's oh, when I'm 25, get married, get the house, 30, mm-hmm. all that kind of good stuff. And I meet women who have this mindset of, yep, I want to get married at 25. I want the ring. And I'm just thinking, but why? Where has this come from? Yeah. And because it's been external and it's mm-hmm. been driven for so long, mm-hmm. it then becomes internal. So like yeah. you said, being able to recognize the internal from the external, yeah. Yeah. make that distinction and really think, okay, but what what pressure is this doing to me? Yeah. What is me trying to chase this expectation as external? What effect does that have on my mental, mm-hmm. on my physical, on my yeah. emotional? Yeah. And just trying to separate. And I feel, because I've started to challenge things in my life quite a lot now. Mm-hmm. Like now I ask myself, wait, well, why did I go to university? Mm-hmm. Was it because I wanted to go or was it pressure from family, parents, my my sister that had gone already and Mm -hmm. all these Mm -hmm. other factors. And now I'm like, actually, okay, what am I trying to achieve now? And Mm. I'm trying to say, are these external or have I always wanted this? So the house, why do I want a house? Is it because in the United Kingdom, (laughs) we're the only country in Europe with the highest mortgage rate because we just love property? Or is it because I want a house and why do I actually want it? So for me, it's been able to like sit down and really challenge myself. And I don't know if either of you have been in... And it's not even about having it. It's like, at what point is it appropriate? Yeah. And I think you can be so driven by the mind, you you can't tune into the natural timing of things. Mm. So some things will come to you far easier. Maybe if you had it a year later, two years later, or even six months before you intended, if you can recognise the opportunity. Mm. But if you're so stuck up here with the script, you can't recognise, hey, I'm getting clear signals that the timing is off for this. Mm. You know, maybe I need to sort of slow down a bit on this. And then check in with it in six months' time, real time, because it doesn't. I'm just getting some signals that this isn't. That sounds so foreign to me right now. Yeah. Because yeah. I wouldn't even know what those signals are. That's because what I, was I guess I'm and, and that's yeah. why I work with people is to recognise the signals that your life is on track or your life is off. <laughs> yeah, before it falls off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too late. yeah. You know what are you, what are you ignoring? You know, some people it's um, you know, when I asked you about how many hours sleep are you having, that's a sign. If you're constantly doing that, that's something off. Mm. You've got some expectations of yourself, which means you think you can forfeit sleep three, four days a week Wait. for some goal that's making you mash up during the day. Yeah. And then you're having to drink more coffee and then you're buzzing from that. And then you're in this cycle that has to do with that you think this goal is more important than your sleep. The sacrifices that people are willing yeah. to make, not yeah. knowing the fact that sleep is such a vital part. Yeah. Because we've done the a foundation. Part. Yeah. Mm. Just that like restoring that kind yeah. of your body. It's yeah. like a balance, the hormones, yeah. the chemicals, yeah. everything. Yeah. It's all needed. But we're like, oh, five hours, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. I'll, survive. Like, no, I'll survive. You know, my dad worked for many years at Ford's, did night work. And I'm sure that's what led to him having hypertension, you yeah. know, that the impact of night work on people is well documented. I'm guilty because yeah. I did initially for my career, I did two years of um, like shift work. So I was working night shifts. Yeah. That's when I got high blood pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, I was young. Your I was age, only yeah, like 22, yeah. 23. Yeah, yeah. It's outrageous, right? yeah. yeah. And they wanted to put me on medicine. I was like, listen, I am young. Yeah. I am not going to be on medicine for the rest of my life. But I made that change. I was so like, I'm I glad can't. you had that resolve. Yeah. And said no. Yeah. You know? Because it was about you changing a system in a way that just had really bad impact for you. Right? Mm, yeah. And Health. it almost made you a stat. And they go, oh, yeah, you know, African <laughs> people always have high blood pressure. That, oh, yeah. And they're yeah. just yeah. one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone in your family have it? And yeah. they're like, I don't believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they're you. putting you in a, a, a track that yeah. is hard to get off of when yeah. they start prescribing medicine for you. Oh, God. So I'm really glad that you said, no, wait a minute, I can manage this. It's because... I'm doing this job. Yeah. It doesn't work with my body rhythm. 
and that's the thing you got to tie into that rhythm like apparently there's rhythms around um eating as well mm -hmm. like you should be eating around when the sun's going up and when the sun's setting and then stopping you know when the sun's gone down your body needs to just rest and do what it needs to do follow I mean, this like yeah that's what we did when i lived in india i mean the meal times were very regular and the last meal of the day was before the sun went down mm -hmm. and i think people are eating a lot of processed food late at night yeah mm. they, they don't even have the three hour gap between eating and sleeping how many people do you know have a three hour gap between eating and sleeping i didn't even know that was a thing so yeah. i'm definitely i'm definitely going to that <laughs> yeah, three hour, a minimum, that, oh really three, yeah especially if it's a lot of carbs because then you're just putting a load of sugar into your system which then converts into fat and clogs up your arteries mm. you know actually did, i did mm. that. yeah because yeah. those it's also tying into sleep again because then your body's just being more active you're not resting yeah. mm. and then you're just gonna be tired again coffee not that down and then caffeine's gonna have an impact on you like it's amazing like yeah. when you think about yeah, it yeah and then you're you're adding these additional habits to compensate yeah. for something that is basically off. And that's a sign, mm. right? Yeah. That's the signal yeah, right that's there. that's the signal. There's a big off-ski one there. <laughs> so, so, so it sounds to me like there's a massive sort of link between that mental and the body as well. Yeah. Because I think the body gets overlooked in a lot yeah, of the time. Yeah, a lot of the time. The yeah. body never lies. The body never lies. Mm. When you keep on overriding it, it keeps on coming back with feedback. <laughs> yeah. And it keeps on escalating the alarm yeah. until it gets to a point where you've got these stamping headaches, you go to the doctor and they say you've got high blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. and you think the it's from nowhere there. you think it's from yeah. nowhere but it's actually yeah been... it's just been escalating and you've been so running around in your mind you keep on minimizing those signals you douse them down with coffee or whatever it Pain is painkillers it's, it's just a migraine yeah but the body never lies it's, a, it's an exquisite you know creation and we do it a lot of disservice Oh, it's that automatic feedback mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. It Your really body's is. like, something's off. You've yeah. got to change. Yeah. yeah. That sleep cycle, yeah. what you're eating, the toxins you're putting yeah. into it, just keep it clean. Yeah. But it's but so hard to make that, that connection, right? In the world we live in, You're getting the signals, yeah. but then what is it? Because there could be so much, so many things happening in your life that you can't actually pinpoint it to one particular. Well, when I work with my clients, it's usually quite easy to identify. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I say to them, my role is I get that you're in the fast lane and I'm in the slow lane. <laughs> and from that slow lane, I can observe a lot more of you than what you think. Yeah. Mm. That's the power of coaching, isn't it? Yeah. Someone who's going to be able to look at you and be, okay, I can see where you're. Yeah. And, and then I just press a pause button and say, have you noticed? Or I ask them a question like I asked you about sleep. I said four hours and you put your hand up, you know. <laughs> guilty and then, and then you start thinking oh how many times have i done that this week what's been the cost yeah what have i then done to compensate for the fact that i didn't have four minutes four hours sleep how many things i had to say no to because i didn't i just wasn't or how much longer did it take me to do things because i only yeah. had four hours sleep mm. and then you're not able to judge your performance and then you're full of that negative inner talk and judgment because you haven't had enough sleep to really be able to assess Am I doing this well or not? Mm. It's the consequences though, isn't it? Yeah. Of you putting your body through that. Yeah. That's one of the consequences. Yeah. So it can't perform well for you. And I guess it, but it does sort of relate back to the reason why they're doing it in the first place, because there's this line I keep hearing, which is incentive drives behavior. Mm -hmm. So what are you pursuing that's so important to you? Yeah based on authenticity, mm -hmm. based on expectations that you're, mm -hmm. you're saying to yourself, you know what? I'm going to deprive my body of one vital aspect, which is sleep. Mm -hmm. in order to achieve X, Y, Z because my parents or my family or work expects it from me. Yeah, I suppose the incentive is based on somebody else's version of your success. Mm. That ex yeah. Because well, yeah, what yeah. is success? Yeah. It's yeah. all different to every yeah. every person, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's got to be tuned into where you're at. You know, are you, um, are you well? If you're sick, then you have to adjust it. Or if you're studying, you know, there's all these different things. Now, your context matters. Mm. Right now, this year, given all these different circumstances... This is what I can do. This mm. is what will make me feel really fulfilled that I'm on track. Next year it'll be different because mm. I would have paid off my loan or whatever. So next year I can do X, Y, and Z. Mm. Recognizing fully this year I can't do it. Mm. And you can say that to people. Listen, right? You know, ask me that again next year. You may get a different answer. Yeah. But this year I've got this and this. I've got to lock down. So I have to say no. I'd love to, but I can't right now. Yeah. So it's kind of a no, but, you know? I you think, you, yeah, go on. I was going to say, no, you spoke um, about sort of that fast lane, that slow lane, yeah. and you sort of having that observation, how important is it for people in either lane, either journey, <laughs> either direction to stop? Just press that, press the, press the brake and just stop and just look back and go, look at what I've done. 
because I think that kind of feeds into that aspect of people having that lack of sleep. Mm. I need to achieve this, mm. especially in our generation. I've next, got to do this. We've one, done one. one. What's next? Yeah. Tunnel vision. Okay, I've done A. What about B? I'm not there yet. You know, I got an A, but I could get an A star. And I think I've really learned to take a, you know, just pause where I am, look back and go, actually, I've done a lot. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned earlier, I, I did this sort of activity, which is a reflective and prospective um, guide where you sit down, you go through your past year's calendar, mm -hmm. you look at everything you've done, everything you've achieved, you write it down. I literally needed extra paper. <laughs> and even from just that one page, I was like, okay, I'm doing it. Look at me. Yeah. And then the next page talks about what did you enjoy? Mm -hmm. What parts did you really enjoy from the last year what mm -hmm. parts do you want to achieve even more of mm -hmm. and it just put me in that state of just understanding the importance of just pausing yeah because again um when you link it to life and cycles it, it just doesn't fit in does it yeah just continuously growing i know you mentioned yeah. something about the economy uh like economy it's based on continual growth yeah and but given it's not what we're doing to our planet the amount of plastic we've got in the sea <sighs> that we don't do with that that doesn't work anymore does it we mm. can see we have to make a choice mm. what sort of kind of growth do we want we can't keep on producing the level of plastic that we have there's nowhere to put it mm. we are the only creature on the planet that creates waste that another creature cannot use mm. we're just out of sync yeah we're out of sync and it sort of, for me it sort of feels like greed because like you said is it the human body if it continues grow continues growing is it, it becomes cancerous yeah, or something a yeah cell, if it continues to grow it becomes cancer yeah. cells die and renew Mm. they continue to grow they become cancerous it's that cycle yeah it's like the seasons isn't yeah. it four seasons of the year everything's say, almost a cycle they say an acronym it? another way of looking at God is generation order and destruction you go through that generation Whoa. order destruction. Destruction. <laughs> destruction generation order destruction. <laughs> whoa hey. that one's gonna sit with me for some time <laughs> you can shut that <laughs> <laughs> it but, makes sense because yeah it it wouldn't make sense if things just continuously kept yeah, going. Yeah. You have to have that cycle. Yeah. So, I mean, a really easy way to review, like your practical tips is saying, what do I need to? So you pause, you put a date in your diary. Okay. That you're mm -hmm. going to reflect on. So just like you have a date to see your friends or have a meeting, you're going to book in a diary meeting with yourself. Ooh. Okay. Um, yeah. Block it out yeah. in the yeah, colander. Block it out. It's <laughs> me time. Yes. It's me in reflection time in the cave. Right? Yes. And I then love this. like three simple questions you can ask yourself is like, or four, is um, what can I acknowledge in myself that I've done this year looking back? Mm. And, and in that, what do I need to continue? Mm. What do I need to stop? Mm -hmm. And what do I need to start? Wow. Mm. Okay. I'm with that. Is that like, because you say it's for the year, but could you do that on a smaller yeah, scale? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. That's heavy. Well, you know, in Sprint Agile, you know, project management yeah, style, yeah. It, it's called a show and tell. Yeah. What so are you, you doing today? you can do today? a monthly show and tell, a weekly show and tell, a fortnightly show and tell. Quarterly. Book, yeah. book, book time with yourself and say, okay, what do I need to start, stop and continue? Mm. And what can I acknowledge? Yes. Because I used to have a blog where I used to reflect on like the month mm. and I haven't done it for a while. And it was powerful just to reflect on what yeah. I've done. But yeah. I didn't answer those questions off. I did break it down into what I've learned, what I need to improve on. Yeah. But those four questions, like, it's deep. And you do have to create that, that time for yeah. yourself to yeah. kind of go through it. But there's also that, 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 that kind of element that might come to it where you might realise something that might actually take you back. Yeah. If, if you know what I mean. Like you might pick up on something like, yeah. wow. Yeah. I didn't really achieve that much this mm -hmm. this, this month, mm -hmm. for instance. Or mm -hmm. I really need to improve this, but I'm not doing it. Like you start mm -hmm. beating yourself up. Yeah. And then how do you overcome that aspect of it? Well, then it's also maybe the question is, um, what's my inner talk? Hmm. Next layer. Yeah. That that's that voice in your head. Yeah. What's it saying? Yeah, and evaluate that. Am I in the inner critic? You know, all the time. Yeah. You know, where is it at? Is it in balance? Because apparently, Mark's isn't loud. it apparently like seventy eight percent? Only if it's you that said seventy eight percent of that inner talk is sometimes negative, yeah, yeah. or not always positive. Yeah. Mm. But we've this is innate in us. Yeah. So how can we or can we? Is it innate it? or is it behavioral? Kind I think of like yeah, no, that inner voice, not necessarily like, the negative part, but yeah. I think that inner voice is innate. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's our consciousness looking at ourselves, but the level of criticism I think comes from expectations that we have of ourselves, that we've taken in from other people, that aren't in balance. Mm. So, so what I'm finding is there's a lack of self-compassion. 
Mm, yeah, because I think the measure is always a, a comparison measure. I'm not there yet. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a language, yeah right? so you're comparing yourself to an imaginary person who didn't have the same path of you, yeah. doesn't even have the same role, but somehow you think that I, you have to match to that mm, person. Yeah. I mean, that's a version of insanity, right? <laughs> Doing the same, yeah. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, over again. again. Expecting Expecting a different, different result. result. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mm. so true. It that's so true. That's sorry. Were you gonna say something? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just, just hitting me. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that point of self-compassion. Yeah. And I think this, this for me, it kind of leads to that point of we're always taught to give to others, mm -hmm. do for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's that point you mentioned of you can't pour from empty. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. give to others yeah, what you, you don't have. You can't yeah. give from empty. Yeah. Like being able to sit down and reflect. And one thing I know I'm guilty of is always looking at other people and saying, well done. Yes, look at what you're mm -hmm. achieving. Mm -hmm. Keep going, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I stand, because mm -hmm. people say to me, Ola man, you're like my motivational speaker. Yeah. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, who's my motivational speaker? Yeah. When am I going to feed myself? Yeah. When am yeah. I going to 